All right, so I believe there were some questions that I've been asked over the past couple days that I said wanted to wait and ask it in front of everybody. So uh, I think at least you were the first person I sort of pushed off and said, hey, why don't you ask that on Wednesday? Do you remember what your questions were? Um, so we do the very first um, lab we did. Ah. All right, so I'm always torn on that one because from my own personal time point of view, I don't want to see them again. But I also understand it's part of the learning process. Uh, so I, I will accept a redo of the first one, but as a general rule, no. That, that'll that be the last one to uh, allow redos on the labs. So please, if you're gonna redo it, then redo it, don't scratch out what you had done and just write over it because uh, unfortunately, the times I've allowed redos in the past and people have done the scratch out and write in tiny print, it just ends up looking like a mess. And so I, I, I want something clean. Not required, so do it or not. For the first lab? For the first lab. No, I, you know, there's, I, I'm already behind on grading, so. Uh, and so, and I need to talk to two people, but I'm planning to post the solutions to master set to either today or tomorrow. So can we see the grade up there or no? If you went and you should, you should see the grade. I'll see you are posting the grade down. There. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you submitted it online uh, through Blackboard, or if you emailed me or submitted it through Blackboard, then I would have marked on your electronic version of it and then posted it on Blackboard. Okay. So if you gave it to me on paper, you should have gotten it back on paper. If you gave it to me electronically, it, it's in Blackboard. Okay. Right. And was there another question, Luis? Seems like I'm thinking there was two of them, but okay. And then Hannah. I was gonna ask about schedule, but you placed it there. Yeah, this is the way I'm seeing it right now. The <coughs> so the vector lab would have been due on Monday. It, it is a holiday, and there's just something in me that says uh, I'm not gonna have something turned in on a holiday. You always, but. If you want to hand it in, on, if you want to submit it electronically on Monday, go for it. But you know, if you can have a day off, take a day off. So, but otherwise, but unfortunately, that's going to sort of cram stuff here. Now, the momentum lab that we'll be doing today is there's very very little math. Uh, I think you do need to do one subtraction. That, that's about it. It's the most conceptual of all the labs that we do. So it is possible, not necessarily going to happen, but it is possible that you or your group will finish the momentum lab before you leave today. It just depends on how efficiently you work or if you want to think about it once you've done it. So that, that's why I have less of a problem having them both do on the same day. But realistically, I'm grading the vector lab first, so probably not creating the momentum lab on that Wednesday if you wanted to play, play the game. Uh, the momentum lab wasn't available to print before class today. The momentum lab wasn't available yeah. to print. I, I'm aware I'll print it out for okay. everyone. Except Toya, she does not get one. <laughs> Anybody, you want one? Yes, it, it is assumed that you will complete it 
online. Okay. Now, I guess officially the lab is not an online course at all. So if this is an issue for you, uh, then talk to me about that. Yeah, I could print out a paper copy for you and you can do the paper copy. But yeah, the idea was if you would do it at home. Okay. Uh, it was in lieu of a far more complex version of it. But I can also give you the far more complex version of it. That. Is it individual work or if you want to work in groups like how we work? It is, it's individual work, but I don't have a problem if you're working with someone else on it. Just make a note of, I don't even know if I have group name as an option there. Because originally it was designed for a completely online lab class. You print it out, so say group name. There is, okay. So if you're working with someone else, yeah, come up with a common group name. If you are, uh, as usual, don't just leave it blank. Be in a group of one, and I guess if there are twenty people, I'll put down group of one. <laughs> well, then I guess that's all me. Some if that's the group name that you want. All right. Any other questions? Right now, in terms of grading, the basically I'm flipping back and forth between the two classes. I'm grading the master set three right now for this group, and then I'll do something for the other class, and then I'll come back and do whatever the next thing to do was for this group. I'm usually a much slower grader, uh, but eight weeks is forcing me to reassess. For the test, do you do a review before, or because some people yeah, part of this is the, the scars from my childhood, that, which is the reason for everything. Uh, I never really cared for the review classes. So my attitude is I'm not going to do an official review. If, you know, I start off the class with, are there any questions? So if people have questions, you know, if I end up doing an hour, 20 minutes, or two hours of answering questions about it, I'll be glad to. But I'm not going to do anything formal. Okay. There are old tests posted, so feel free to start working through some of the old tests. That, that's my general approach. So you do test corrections or like completely test retakes? Test corrections. The way the test corrections work. Oh, uh, yeah, there's one other thing. Um, if you get, so when I set up the, the assignments that you can submit online, the best possible that you can get on it is 4.3. That's an A plus. There's a series of ones where I put in 4.3, but the system had some problem with something that wasn't a whole number. And so it, it was an extra click for me. So for now, when I create the assignments in Blackboard, I'd say the maximum point you can get is four. And then if you get a perfect score, get a 4.3, I'll deal with it at that point. But the system basically is still on some sort of other mindset. So if a 4.0 is an A and a two is a C. So if you get a C on an assignment and I put down two, what the Blackboard thinks is, Oh, they got two out of four, that's 50%, so that is whatever color comes up. I do not control the colors that you see. Uh, I experimented with another student a couple years ago, and I 
adjusted a couple things and all I could do was adjust the color coding that shows up for me, not for the student. So I have no control over if it thinks that a two is failing. Now, I know what it means. That's more important than the computer knowing what it means. So if, you, if I put down 2.0, that's not 50%, that's a C. It might be 50%, but that, more importantly, it's a C. All right, so basically the grades that you can get, uh, 0 0.3, uh, 0.7, 1, 1.3, 1.72, and so on, up to a 3 point. Dot, dot, dot. So you'll, when you get the test back, there'll probably be two raw score numbers at the top because I figure out the raw score two different ways. And that goes back to a student I had my first year here. Did really well at the free responses. Could not do multiple choice worth a darn. But he obviously knew the material, but there was something about the, the I don't know if it's the excess reading or the sort of absolute nature of multiple choice. Uh, but I thought this is just the grade he's getting is, does not reflect what he can do. And so I thought, all right, let me see if I can figure out other ways of looking at the exact same information to see if I can come out with can I somehow justify a better score? And so when I, at this point it's evolved into, or you know, we'll say evolved, into I figure out what your raw score is more than one way. I take the best of those raw scores. That's what it's based on. So usually when you get a test back, there'll be two raw scores at the top and then a letter grade. The letter grade would then translate into a numeric score here. So when you do test corrections, if you failed it, you have a possibility of bringing it up to a C. If you got an A on it, you have a possibility of bringing it up to an A plus. And then it's just sort of a linear scale from there. So halfway between zero and four is two. So if you got a two on it, you could get, well, halfway in between there, which is a 3.15. So that is the best possible that you can get. Typically, people down here have difficulty, they've missed so much that there's obviously, there's some gap in the knowledge. Uh, typically they don't get all those, they don't get all the points, but they possibly could. A couple of people have gotten close, but usually, you know, for whatever reason that they failed it the first time, usually the situation hasn't changed. And people up here usually are pretty satisfied with that. And so, even though they could get it up to a 4.3, it's, it's usually they don't spend the time doing it. The people who usually get the most games are the ones in the middle. So if you work it out and you end up with a 3.07, I don't round that off. That's what your test grade would be when I do my averages. And I can go into more excruciating detail if you would like, but that's the way I do test corrections. But the big thing, when you're doing test corrections, and I'll say it again later, you are trying to convince me that you understand the material. If you just put the answer down, that tells me nothing. There are times I've even just given, hey, here are all the answers. What's the test in the class? So telling me the answer just doesn't get you anything. Questions at this point. Yeah. So to like, like once we get our test back um, and we want to do test corrections, is that something we do in class or but outside of class? Okay. I typically in a sixteen-week class, I say, hey, get it back to me in two weeks. And an eight-week class. Probably still say two weeks, but the main thing, what I don't want to have happen, and before I started saying I wanted two weeks, some students would wait till the last week of school, and then they'd hand in that with a big stack of other stuff that they had kept putting off. Yeah. And typically, when I get the big stack at the end of the semester, it's a huge pile of crap. So I want to avoid that. 
that I don't want you having to worry about it at the end of the semester. Yeah, the, um, what I talked about on labs, if you don't do a majority of the analysis, it's an automatic app. Don't do the majority of two things, like results and analysis. It's an automatic G, which you did, as if you didn't hand it in. Don't do the majority of three parts. Uh, it's worse than not handing it in. I've gotten some of those in the big stack, which is one of the reasons I pulled it in, because I was just so ticked off that this person would hand in something that basically had his name on it. That was about it. That he was expecting something for it. Anyway, the psychological aspect of it. Other questions? All right. All right, questions about, I think, open up to more than just administrative. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about the master's question. Okay. This is the, very similar to the last page of the linear motion lab. Uh, I don't have the questions in front of me, I just have the answers. So, that's fine. Oh, how about if I just go crazy and look at the, what did I say? Oh, okay. Uh, I was looking at the wrong master set. Oh, okay. All right, so this is the elevator. All right, a specific question or just in general? I don't know. It's just kind of mixing me up with other things. I'm really trying to think about it. Just don't know how to approach it. Well, let's just start out with the force diagram, if in doubt. All right, so I have. Person on a scale in an elevator, I believe. Is that right? Elevator, table. Now we don't need necessarily all of these objects in it, but oh, and there's a ground down here. But it's just sort of reinforcing the force diagram. Let's do a force diagram here. Anyone? Acting which way on what? The cable and the elevator. Okay, are they pointing towards each other or away from each other? So tension is a pushing force. So you're saying that the tension is pushing the elevator down? So if I'm drawing the arrow on the elevator, which way am I drawing that arrow? So if you're saying down, you're saying that the rope is pushing the elevator down. Yeah, it is. The elevator is pulling it up. This is the force that the rope exerts on the elevator, and the force that the elevator exerts on the rope. All right. All right, so that there's only one rope, so tension's done. Uh, weight force down on the man and up onto the ground. All right. 
the weight of man, weight of man. All right, which way is it going on man? So uh, we're assuming an ideal room for right now. So I've got basically three objects with maps here. So we're done with weight. Contact here with the normal force, contact there, and that contacts with tension. So we're done with normal force. There is no other, and we'll just assume a nice, ideal frictionless, frictionless elevator. Now, may I ask why wasn't that something that we would have thought to do? The F town. Why is it something that you would not have thought to do? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, the problem just deals with the person, and the rest of it. It's by implication. Now, why an individual person wouldn't have thought to do it? I think probably some childhood scars. But it, <laughs> you're not buying that? No. <laughs> All right, so the question is oh, yes, Billy. Sorry. I'm totally wrong, but isn't there normal force from the, the elevator in the ground? I hope not. 